He's actually a pretty good shot caller. He's really good when it comes to the crunch as well, these team fights and setting them up for success. I think that adding regret might actually help them with uh, reinvigoration as well. I'm actually really excited for this bottom lane duo as well. Raze and regret just sounds like the most go-in style. I mean, we just watched King play. Raze, a little bit similar as far as putting his face into the enemy team. We saw it last uh, split on the Corky pick when he was strong, just sort of standing in the front line, getting phosphorus bombs on everyone. So we'll see how this one's going to work. And up against T-Gun as well, a man that does like to put his face in it also. Possibly explosive. Yeah, there could be a lot of bottom lane aggression. I think it comes down to Squidgy, namely, as he did get a couple of games on Lucian that we won't see from him this time around. And he also showed a bit of strength and a bit of weakness in there. So I will say near exploitable player. But once again, I think most of our attention will be towards the top half of the map if you're an Abyss Esports fan. Exactly right. But all of the bands have completed. Fizz, Lucian, Trundle taken away by Abyss as Diwals remove Nidalee, Azir, and Soraka. So from back-to-back -back Soraka games to no Soraka on the Rift. And I'm personally okay with this. You know, I think we've got our potassium, not enough banana, no, no bananas necessary as we head into game number three for the day. But yeah. Ryze is going to be left open and Pac-Man looking at it for now for Luch. Yeah, decently large amount of targeted bans. Even the Fizz from Abyss Esports yeah. away from Fantix means that they might get options that they want in this middle lane. Yeah, potentially a flex ban there as well as Chippies could have picked that one up towards the top side. But Dials now with two priority picks to come down. We'll see whether the victor is going to be looked at. But probably doesn't need to be prioritized now that the rise has been shown from Abyss. Yeah, and rise to me should be the mid lane option. I don't think we'll see that one flexed either, but Luch definitely capable of playing it as it's basically a control mid. Yep. And uh, Luch does that well. Kindred has been left up. Yeah, and I think Kindred should be looked at. Sybil depends, and it's something that the desk mentioned, is do they actually prioritize taking the Elise away from Seb? Yeah. Who's had a mean Nidalee, but he'll always find that one ban. Sybil had had oh, Graves and Zack. Yeah, and Elise Which has always been played. coined as the, the kind of the get out of my champion. jungle, though, yeah. as well for the Kindred. So as a response, Knowing that the Kindred is up, I think Abyss Esports will be happy with a, an Elise of their own. Seven weeks of OPL, two splits ago, and it wasn't banned in two games. Yep. And he won those two games, and both of them were against Legacy. Mm -hmm. And they immediately regretted that decision every time. Yeah, and so they got a guy with that name. Put into the bottom lane, forcing even more regret. There's now Caitlyn going to be picked up. Elise there as well for Seb. Sort of the pick that we were expecting. I do like Caitlyn out of Squidgy, adding some range to what is a relatively short range comp and does work very well with the Braum. Of course, you can just stand back from range, proc in those passive shots. So that is going to be your team comp out of Abyss as immediately the Maokai to be locked in here from Chippies. Hmm. We'll see how this is going to work. Of course, Oh, actually, no, it was Rek'Sai. Okay, switched over the last minute. Caught yeah. me by surprise. He did. He switched over. He's got that physical damage dealer as well, given the rest of his team. I still like it. Yep. And the is in a pretty good place at the moment, also giving them that extra tanky tool. And if there's one thing that Abyss are, it's tanky. Oh, yeah. Pretty much everywhere except the Caitlyn, who sits far enough back, usually, yeah. that you'd think it's safe, right? You can't really sit too far back against this uh, Direwolf's composition, however, that has sculpted themselves plenty of means to get there. Bard able to kick it off. TF able to actually just be behind you, if he so chooses. Malko with teleport flanks as well, and Kindred also just quietly capable of being anywhere in a team fight, skirting around seamlessly. That's exactly right, and I think that this Direwolf's comp really plays to what they've always been as well, this sort of like skirmish heavy style, the reactionary play where they can get themselves into these yeah. skirmishes around the river, like make sure that they can dictate the flow of that sort of early game running around yeah. phase. And with destinies, with teleports out of chippies and so much sort of CC to follow up, it's looking dangerous. Yeah, it absolutely is. I think there's a lot of strengths here from the Direwolves. Abyss Esports have plenty of their own though. We'll see what they can do. Use that hashtag AE win if you think that Abyss are going to be able to take this one or the hashtag Direwolves win or DW win if you think that the Dials are going to be able to get their first win on the board because they need to start finding something. Dials, of course, a playoff team normally here in the OPL that didn't yeah. start all that strong. We'll see whether they can turn that all around as we hop onto Summoner's Rift. Yeah, Dials, known to love a dogfight. They always bounce back oh, yeah. in a positive manner. So moving into this second game again, we alluded towards it, but they have a lot to prove still in the OPL. I certainly do. We are going to have a look at the Keystone Masteries. Nothing really standing out too much. Would you prefer the good call? Just the fervor of battle the onto Kindred, something you don't often shot? see. 
Yeah. Usually you'd see Strength of the Ages as the more efficient Keystone Mastery, but all things considered, it's still quite good. Kendra being able to kite camp, you'll find is uh, perfectly capable. Yeah, we'll be staying alive there with that W passive as well. Storm yeah. Raider Surge, I guess, is the only other thing mentionable here, as we have seen sort of a mix-up of quite a few different Keystones to be opted for from Rise. You can hop into that more defensive tree if you want to get Strength of the Ages, something like that. But this time, just wants to make sure that slow reduction is there. Yep. and get himself where he needs to go. And one of the cooler things as well about what Direwolves have done is they've uh, put the Twisted Fate into that middle lane, which means you don't need a teleport, and because you're against the Rise usually, you don't want the teleport because he'd just kill you. Yeah. So you kind of need a defensive summoner spell as a precautionary measure. That exhaust will be very handy, and he still has the destiny to get him around the map where loot can't. Oh, Regret and Ray's actually moving into the jungle here. Pac-Man and Seb forced to move out of the way. And the lane swap actually going to be instigated here from the Direwolves. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Direwolves actually trying to take any small blue ones. It doesn't look like it because they were going to be late to lane. Yep. And they might actually just go to steal this blue here. Yeah, Squidgy's actually tanking that one up. He's going to reset there. Is Sybil going to get stunned by the concussive blows? Direwolves are pressured out of their jungle as well. Good response. But Skyen is in with a tweet. My favorite IMOPL rivalry is Spawn LOL versus the English language. Oh, that. Is it not true? I know, it's adorable though, let's be honest. Civil and Chippies have transitioned over to the top side of the map, but they are going to be able to take down a Wraith Camp. And you can see Regret just tanking up minions by the looks of things for the fun. Building up a bigger creep wave. So, rule of thumb for those who aren't too aware is the more damage you take that minions aren't, the stronger those minions will be when it crashes towards the turret. Makes life a lot easier for you to take that turret. As if you've managed to save one or two melee creeps, as an example, from being one-hittable, yeah. then you'll find that you've got it. one or two extra hits under that turret where it's not hitting you. And with the changes to it, having armor, not being able to backdoor it as well, it's unreasonable. It's actually still just very clever from Regret. Yep, big deal. Of course, Kindred Mark is going to be denied here by Abyss, as Seb was able to pick that one up in the river. Steals away the blue buff at the same time. His actually hasn't been looked at on the side of Sybil. Sybil will probably work towards it, though. He'll probably start near that Scuttle Crab, dependent on its spawn. Go maybe Gromp and Blue at the same time. But he'll see that it's all available right now. Yep. And there's no way that they're going to have Abyss on this side of the map anyway, as it's just a standard lane swap. Strong side you of can map, see. of course. Ray's pulling a regret. Yeah. Everyone just wants to tank damage, if they can. Which, now that the turrets are a little bit stronger, is probably a good idea. Eat that cocoa. Yeah, you want it. And by eat, I'm in drink. He's is is pushing his luck. He most certainly is. But Chippies, of course, is going to be able to finish this one off. A lot of caster creeps there to offer their damage towards this turret. I'm going to transition over to the minion wave, though. The other rule of thumb as well is you want your top laner to be healthy, not your AD carry. Yep. Or support, generally. I think you'll be okay with that. Which is why they do this, because Chippies will want to sit here. He'll want to make the wave kind of be frozen until you see the response out of the Caitlyn and the Braum. Once you see that response is when you start to hard push before they can get to it to make sure, which is why Sybil has actually placed his ward next to the Gromp camp that he was taking. Because knowledge is power. That certainly is. Of course, speed as well, pretty handy, as the tower just now falls down on the bottom side of the map. Bit of an advantage there for the Direwolves as they manage to get their lane swap happening a little bit faster in the bottom lane already now to answer. Pac-Man going to be the one that really loses out on this trade. He's got a flank on him too. Yeah. Let's use the phase dive. Closes a little bit more distance but now doesn't have his maneuverability. Nice slow comes in. The got last him. auto attack and the Ignite is going to be it and Regret, welcome to the Direwolves, picks up first blood. And it's safe to say that because of how slow Abyss were with actually taking down their turret, it gives enough time for Diables to be down there almost sooner than expected. Pac-Man goes down quite easily. Nice Ignite usage from that Bard. And kicking it off on the right foot here, Diables. They certainly are here as Looch manages to pick up all of the creeps underneath the turret. 43 to 41 as far as that farm is concerned in this agricultural mid lane. With both Fantix and Looch being the farmers that they are. I do love a good farm. All right. Fantix just showing complete mastery. Even instantly blue carded. Like, I'm not sure if he's tapping his foot to the tune of Twisted Fate's W, but... I think he almost dictates which card comes out. That's how much Twisted Fate he's played. It's like Pokemon balls. Yeah. yeah yes. He just knows. Blue card, I choose you. Yeah, part of the cards belong to him. Well, now we're just Yu-Gi-Oh! somehow as well. Oh, look, if you're going to do it, you may as well do all of them at once. 
pretty never much. seen Yu-Gi-Oh throw a Pokemon out, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. I was, just, I was just going for, like, let's get the whole Cheese TV collection happening. <laughs> Uh, Dival's now just going to push down as a four-man group on this bottom lane outer turret. Same thing going to be happening towards the top side as Abyss Esports doing their very best to get as much global gold for the Caitlyn. Get her past that trough that we talk about so often. Of course, Ray's happy to stack up that tier at the same time, so both teams had a bit of an accord. He's going to be Echo picking up all of the gold here, the local gold for this turret. As Fantix actually taking a lot of damage from Luch. Uh... The what damage was done, like? regardless of the rest of that trade, naturally. Loot's still showing. Yep. And he has a lot of strength against Thanks for the save. Ticks. Yep. And just wants to bully him out. It's never going to be an all-in-one combo. That's not what Ryze is capable of anymore. So, all things considered. Reset. Do it again in a couple seconds. Precisely. And Direwolves able to utilize their bottom side presence in order to pick up the dragon. It is going to be Abyss deciding to pick up an inner turret if they can on the top side of the map. Back is going to come in from T-Gun as Fantix once again going to get prisoned up. He red carded. That's exactly what Ryze should do every time. So Luch with very good awareness and knowledge of the matchup, I think, is the important thing. As Seb's been found and money's been taken from his hands. The main thing is, is that Fantix gets more numbers there in the, in the bottom of your screen. You're referring to his passive as well. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. With every number he gets, he gets more. Exactly. Let's just confuse everybody. <laughs> Naturally, he's passive, giving something, more something gold numbers. when Good he thing. gets a last Twisted hit. Oh, you can see Regret actually paying a visit here to the mid lane. The same thing to be done, though, for Abyss. Oh, and of all things as well, the, the Drake that they took at, like, six and a half minutes in this game is an ocean Drake. Mm -hmm. That means that the jungler never has to base. Top laner, depending on if it's a freeze or not, you would say never has to base either. Support. 100% never has to base, unless he wants wards. Like, the availability, the health regeneration, the mana regeneration, and a champion like Bard getting that mana regen. He's dropping Coco everywhere. Yeah, and for a team that's just so happy to move around the map as well, and the Diables is there's another Rune Prison. T-Gun coming in, is able to find the Winter's Bite there as well. Stun is going to come down. Regret trying to save his mid laner. is going to do so as Prey Seeker comes in. I don't know how that Cosmic Binding worked, but it was beautiful. And that is going to be the disengage for the dial. Yeah, well done to actually disengage. A very tanky Fantix as well. Not too easy to kill considering he's going for the Catalyst build. A little bit different to Choo Choo's that we saw in set yeah. number one, game number two. It means that every time he deals damage, he gets health back. In other words, he's using mana. Mm -hmm. Which is enough to actually save him as well as all of the Abad time that he has been spending in this middle lane. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of Bard, now wandering towards the top side of the map, Squidgy having to deal with a lot of Direwolves members. As you can see, Sybil waiting in the wings, has the lands respite if anyone gets into any trouble at the same time. All skirmish ready on the side of the Direwolves as, of course, the Destiny also there. Squidgy, however, has a lot of traps. I just can't get over the fact that they got that Ocean Drake of all of them is early. Yep. The team comp that they have as well, it's actually very handy for them. Ezreal stacking that tier with mana regeneration if he's just fighting minions. Like, seriously. Stunning. Fantix actually going to be able to pick up the blue buff here as well. He's going to be answered by Seb on the bottom side of the map, most likely. Of course, Luch knows exactly what's going on. Of course, I believe that went over to him a little while ago. Sybil taking a lot of damage here. Tegan forced to use the flash. That wolf spite was going to do a lot of work. Yeah, nice jump from Tegan actually to dodge the binding out of the bud. And Regret doesn't get the stun that he was looking for. Still, proactive play, early pressure being established. And all of it is still benefiting Chippies, who is now finding himself quite ahead of his lane opponent. Yeah. The Maokai is going to be very strong. Well, Batman falling down early on didn't help, but there was also the fact that, look, Chippy's got a little bit more time on that top side of the map. A little bit more efficient in the taking of the turret. Now is going to move that power into this Rift Herald. We'll see who's going to pick it up, because Sybil may actually want this one. I would think out of all of these people, it would be Sybil. They might give it to Ray's, depending on how adventurous they're feeling, but it makes the most sense that the Kindred will get it. Yep. He does things alone occasionally, whereas the other two don't. Certainly right. So we're just going to be a bit of a menace. Stack up that corruption, try and throw it into the face of his opponents. But you can see Seb actually farming extraordinarily well. The Spantix is looking to try and defend this turret. Nice unbreakable to stop him from clearing out the wave for the moment. But you can see that turret's still very healthy. And Red Card's still AoEing off a of Braum Shield regardless. It's still going to hit that area around Tiga. Yeah. And so blocking it only does so much. And realistically, Fantix still gets what he wants from it. 
And um, this is an interesting adaptation. As you can see, Looch has a Hextech Revolver. Deep down, I feel like we all know where that could go. Dash Cannon. But there's also the other option. Being. Yeah. So the contrast between, I don't actually remember what it's called. Neither it's do something I. Something Hextech. Yeah, Hextech thing. Great item. It's a, an immediately stacked version of a Rod of Ages is the way to look at it, right? A little bit more ability power. Has an active as well that does bonus damage, which is quite complimentary for a Ryze. Yeah. Who, you would have to say, the changes to Ryze made it so that he couldn't 100 to 0 anybody whilst they're locked down. He could 50 like percent of their health bar instead. This might make it a little bit closer to Kill Threat. If he finishes very the excited. unnamed item. Yeah, very excited to see how he's going to go. But haven't really seen any variation in Ryze's build at all over the last few months. As T-Gun, spotted by Regret, he's looking for a Cosmic Binding. He's going to find it there. Oh, okay. You can't stun wards, Mr. Regret. Yeah, went for it though. That's the main thing. His Ray is now picking up even more farm towards the bottom side of the map. Squidgy's done very, very well finding himself CS across the board as well. He's looking to go directly for the Infinity Edge by the looks. No Runans to be cheekily picked up amongst those items, although he could go for it now. Has the flat damage components. This of is the a IA. fight for a pink ward, by the way. The way Luch and Fantix are all standing. Yep. Stand <laughs> the rest of Abyss lane. Nope. Absolutely taken out. They've actually four man groups in this middle lane. This is face wave clear does only so much, but I actually think they're wasting time. You will see the wave clear start to come out now, and they're giving opportunities to Dire Wolves, I think, to actually get in there. Well, nice trap line there from Squidgy. As the Mystic Shot is going to fly through. Of course, Seb did move his way out. Tremor Sense was showing where Regret was. As you're right. Abyss Esports not really able to find too much from that mid lane group at all. And it's given Chippies a whole bunch of free time towards the top side of the map. Yeah, and this is where it backfires because they've actually gone for Cleanse on that Rise instead of Teleport. I mean, it's okay. But realistically, it's just the Twisted Fate that's going to be doing it. And at yeah. the end of the day, what he wants to be doing if the Caitlyn decides it's time to go mid lane is actually go to that side lane, look to maybe have the double teleport threat with the Ryze there. It's something that Ryze had as a big benefit in his kit and actually forced other people to react to him without the teleport, which is why Ryze into Azir was actually very common at MSI. Yeah, precisely. Well, you can see Pac-Man using that time wider clears out that way quite nicely. Not going to be much threat. This Fantix taking some damage here from Luge, clears out the Fantix minions. Fantix fight him. A little bit. You're right, Fantix just... Looking at him, says, yeah, bring it, man. Yeah, and again, this is a completed Rod of Ages against components at the moment. Looch having to go for that tier in between. Slows down the spike timing. Yep. With power, and still he's only really looking to poke and cause some problems with the mid lane of Diawals, but it hasn't caused any yet. And especially with that next item that it looks like Fancy is going towards. Let's see what it is. It's, bit or if it's actually just an outright void stuff. And this is so dangerous. If Direwolves are able to have a dominant game here, which, you know, not a lot of kills, but they're ahead organically by 2,000 gold and by two dragons. This is a team that's just able to farm a whole lot better. And you can see Fantix, 146 CS here at 14 minutes on the dot. Continuing to do his Fantix things. And yeah. I have a feeling he's got something to prove against Luch. So I feel like, yeah, both of these mid laners, they do love farm. They will be very farm heavy players and have a similar playstyle as mentioned by Benstel on the desk. Yeah. But it also means that they will collide at the same time. The Ryze has finished the item. The item. I'm going to actually, you know, I'm just going to look it up. Yeah. It's a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? It is. Hadn't, haven't seen it before from anyone. I just anyone. didn't expect to see no, it on a Ryze. I didn't come in today saying, oh, look, Ryze, they always pick this item up. Yeah. We'll get back to you though, folks, as Fantix and Looch once again are going to square off against one another. Fantix giving him some room this time. T-Gun is going to make his way through at the same time. Oh, nice unbreakable. Deny as much farm as you can, T-Gun. That is the way. Everything's still going well, though, for Direwolves, whilst he's denying a lot of things, T-Gun. Yeah. Minor victories don't actually favor them at the moment. Squidgy sitting in these side lanes as well is actually a big indication that he's just weak. Cole complete. Oh, so they're actually looking for a grad. The magical journey is going to come down. Luch caught by the Tempered Fate. More of a disengaged variety, but oh, it's wow. a really nice stun. How did that even happen? As Sybil able to dance his way forward. Glacial Fissure comes down. Fantix just takes it. Doesn't really care too much at all as the Chrono Break is going to be used. Pac-Man just exits the lane completely. Heads towards the bottom side once more, but five members of the Diables are going to be able to take down the Atatarot in the mid lane. 
and continue their objective-based onslaught on this game. That's exactly what they are doing. Objectives, they play it slow and eventually Abyss come to them. Because it comes to them, they get Bard Stuns, they get Ezreal Ultimates and Twisted Fate is a tank at this stage in the game. Because he's got health to back him up and just does not die. Yeah. Chippies as well with the teleport timing, actually using his Twisted Advance on the Echo. Forcing him to not be able to kill Fantix and then take too much damage, which means he did piece the heck out. Everything looking really strong here for the Direwolves at 16 minutes in this game. Dragon control, tower control, they're doing it all. Yeah. Void Rush is going to be able to get Seb back into the jungle, but A, they do have a lot of late game threats. You know, the Caitlyn there as well as, you know, a big death ball as far as those abilities are concerned, but... You, no, you can't make it over that. Nice yeah. try, Fantix. He's going to get Rune Prisoned up. Fantix taking so much damage, but... Sybil in there with the Savior play. And the heal is going to come out. Fantix, of course, with the Destiny available, can afford to go back to base and still get himself back into the mid lane to defend if he needs to. But you can see this turret actually quite healthy. This True Shot Barrage is going to come down. t nice, nice Unbreakable. Yeah, he's going to stop those minions from dying too quickly. However, they do fall. The saving grace of that is the T-Gun just doesn't take damage from it. So the saving of the minions didn't actually provide them with anything. Yep. And realistically, the Direwolves hold. Fantix actually just makes a big mistake. and just tries to skirt around the outside of a Caitlyn trap. Realizes it's a mistake. And thankfully, Kindred is there. Sybil is there with his Lamb's Respite to keep him happy. So small error made up for by a lot of damage that Sybil is currently dealing. And that is absolutely a point that we need to touch on. The amount of damage that he is dealing is noteworthy. Yeah, just silly stuff. Also found out the, uh, the name of the item. What is it? So irrelevant. He that doesn't sound GLP like a... P800. Oh, no wonder we forgot the name. <laughs> so... I mean, like, do they design these without thoughts in mind? Um, I'm just going to call it the Robin quickly. The Hextech DFG. Hextech G DFG, that sounds good. Or oh, Hextech BFG, like it's a, it's a big gun. Whoa. It's not a gun, it's a yeah. GLP. Yeah, good point. Seb, looking for the knockup onto Sybil here. Doesn't quite have the Lancer Spite available yet again, but it does have damage to offer back. Wolf Spite, not going to be found for the proc. But Sybil able to assert dominance, pick up some control of this area. Yeah, the Battle of the Junglers. Naturally, Seb having early pressure as he would on this Rek'Sai, working towards his super tanky item build. Even going for that OG Sight Stone inclusion in there. Like it, like it. A lot of strength on that Rex side, but his damage starts to fall off quickly. And that's where you'll find Sybil bites back, and he does hold his own. Self-Jungle Defiance. Yeah, he's a legitimate damage threat here on the side of the Direwolves. Pac-Man will probably be doing a little bit more than Chippies, but probably not to, to the same extent as a Kindred is going to be offering. As T-Gun taking a bit of damage, Unbreakable going to help him out there, though, as Direwolves just pressing their advantage forward. Yeah, but still the gold league grows, right? Yeah. Whilst they're pushing that advantage, it might be small details, but sooner or later, their backs will break here on the side of Abyss if they continue to pressure. And it's mounting towards the third dragon. The Bard ulti. Yeah, there's the Tempered Fate. T-Gun has been caught out. Seb as well takes a bit. Nice trap placement there from Squidgy, though. He's going to keep everyone okay. Oh, rich. Shippies, yeah, he's going to be the focus of a lot of attention here, but he's a tank. More than happy to do that as T-Gun is able to utilize the stand behind me to get himself to safety, and the tree is going to fall. Direwolves might actually have to move out of the way as ultimate has to be used from Sybil. Didn't trust Regret. No. Weirdly enough, he doesn't even walk towards him. He just blocks it out with the Lamb's Respite. Direwolves, we said they were looking aggressive, and they definitely were. There is a point where it's too much. We definitely saw that point. Yeah, parallel Convergence, not going to be acted upon, but the outer turret is going to fall. So nice capitalization here from Abyss. And they pulled this gold lead well and truly back. Only about 3,000 now the lead from the Direwolves. It was starting to stretch to a, that 5k mark. Also opens up this dragon as a potential possibility. Yeah, Abyss definitely no slouches. They do love a good team fight as well. Remember, their mid lane is a farm heavy player. Yeah. He's on that rise, and the rise is scaling. Vantix didn't have his Lich Bane at that point either, which could have been the difference. But once again, we look at the Drakes taken. And it's a pretty scary combo for anybody against the Twisted Bane. Oh, yeah. Or a Bard. Oh. Yeah, they're just going to have so much flexibility in moving around the map. Oh my god, the next dragon. Is that an ocean again? Yep. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a tsunami. 
That's what that's what it'd be if there's no like a bit of wind. Nah, that's like big surf. Hurricane. Uh, I don't know. Nah, it's a whitewash on top of a big wave, man. Ah, that's what it is. All right. Absolutely. We we'll call it Chopu. Wait, hang on. Tsunami then sort of works. Nah, it's it? Chopu. <laughs> Chopu. All right. You got this one. You're the one from uh, Chopes. The Gold Coast. You can grab it. <laughs> Make sure you let us know on Twitter, guys. Think, uh, knows what these amalgamations of dragons are. Probably the most fun that we have here on the caster desk, working out what the combos mean. It's not true. Also working out item builds that people are going towards with Pac-Man. Well out of position. He is. He's dodged himself to some relative safety, but Fantix just says, nah, you're dead. Yeah, the, uh, the safety was not relative. Whoa, Sybil, forced to use Whoa. a flash. Squidgy explodes him. My god, just a BF sword and pickaxe is what you need to kill the relatively squishy Kindred. Yeah, Kindred's health bar actually looking a little bit bigger than it was due to the Hex Drinker shield that we saw ah, on yes. him. yes. Only blocking the magic damage and full physical damage comes out of Squidgy as they want to defend this. Yeah, Tempest Fate came in, protects the turret, teleport down from Chippies as well. Oh, he takes a fair bit of damage. Bantix in there with a lot of work to do, but Chippies forced to use the flash. Nice ult comes out of... T-Gun, as you can see, Squidgy able to get a lot of damage through, but might need to back off now. Teleport Whoa, coming on the in flame. from AE. See, Raze has to watch out for Pac-Man, who is quite sticky. He's holding his ground, Raze. He's got Oh him. my god, so much damage. Raze just hits every ability and takes down the top laner. Diwall's now on the offensive. As you can see, Sybil has made his way back in, trying to close some gaps. His Winter's Bite not going to find Fantix. You can see how confident the AD carry of the Direwolves is. Raze knows what he is doing on this Ezreal. Oh, damn right. They have so much sustain as well with these Ocean Drakes. They've actually just gone straight to the Baron. No top lane and no teleports. Seb is the last bastion of defense here if he can steal it at best. Well, it's already down to 1,000 health. That is going to go as Sybil just smites early. That Doesn't even dead. care. Yeah, Seb checks a little bit late. That is going to be Fantix picking up another kill. 2-0-2 now for the Twisted Fate, and Dial's just looking in so much control and looking so comfortable. They're not done. Yeah, Destiny's going to come through. True Shot Barrage is there. It's going to be nailed on a loot. Brilliant use of the exhaust to make sure he can't get any follow-up kills as Regret oh, takes wow. the turret and dies. Squidgy going to lock down one for himself. Traps there as well. Dial's with some barren up creeps looking to get some work done. The Chippies is not a target you really want to look at, Pac-Man. No, but they just need to back away. Squidgy putting in work for Team Abyss. 100% kill participation. But it's not going to be enough to save the entire map, which is exactly what they've been doing. Pac-Man should have learned his lesson by now. Yeah, it takes so much damage there from Razor. Finishes off the turret as well as the priority. Squidgy still here towards the top side. You can see Dials haven't let up on the pressure. Chippies now with his health bar back. Dials are just going to reset. You can see Empowered Recalls help them move back there, and they've already gotten a bunch of work done after that uh, Baron did go down. Yeah, everything looking really good here for the Diables in game number one. And try as they might, Abyss, whether the idea is there, the engage might be there, the strategy even, perhaps when they were looking in this middle lane, but when it comes to the execution, it's just not the right place, right time. Squidgy's positioning has always been a concern for me. Yeah. It always feels like he's just that tiny bit too forward. And Pac-Man is just so far behind. That is 70 CS in the lead that Chippies is. Yeah, look, he's been ruined. And Seb also actually just going to face check this one. Sybil able to take down the red buff. Pac-Man as well, once again caught out of position by Raze. Flash has to be used as well as the phase dive. Raze wants that. Here it True is. True shot barrage. Not going to be quite enough damage. Destiny's almost up. Fantix wants it so bad. You can feel it through the monitor. Yeah, but this connects nonetheless, right? And you can see uh, Pac-Man... No ulti, no teleport, no flash now, and no chance at all that he can deal with anybody on Summoner's Rift. Probably not even the Maokai, to be perfectly honest with you. The third Ocean Drake is about to spawn in a minute 20 as well. Dials pick this one up. Honestly, good luck, Abyss. Yeah, it, they'll like walk into the jungle for three seconds and they'll be full health after a team fight getting them down to blinking health bars. Twisted Fate's altered. Yeah, Destiny is going to come in there looking for Squidgy and they'll find him. All too easy as Fantix is able to help take down this turret. Raze there as well. And the two carries for the Diables just looking brilliant today. Tempt Fate came in, disengaged successful here from the Diables on the bottom side. And they can just stop recalls and push the inhibitors. Oh, regret. This guy's barters look so good. T-Gun with the Unbreakable, but it's not looking like the name really makes sense as T-Gun takes so much damage. Inner turret's going to fall down, Inhibitor's going to fall down on the top side, and Dials are everywhere. Yeah, easy Inhibitor taken. Once again, the carries. 
of this Dire Wolves roster, able to beat tanks, able to beat anybody that gets in their way, and sending Squidgy to the side lanes. Actually, another thing that we've touched upon that we have to look at from Abyss. Put him on a champion like Caitlyn, you put him with the team. I just can't do anything with the Ezreal. Oh, oh. nice engage. Yeah, Seven's actually going to look from the knockup. Finds it onto three people as Parallel Convergence is in there, but there's no procking it because Pac-Man's dead. Chippies tanks the turret forever. Not going to survive after that Lambs was fight, but they take down the turret. Nice use of that one. Keeps Regret alive as T-Gun just trying to do what he can. No one's blocking. Oh, no. Poor little Regret is going to fall, but... That was because Fantix wanted to kill. Sybil jumps right in front there as Luch actually able to answer with a fair bit of damage. Fantix looking for a gold card underneath the turret. Just blows his Zonyas after taking down the AD carry. Everything's going to be fine. That's going to be the ace. And Direwolves may just be able to finish off this game. Oh my god, Direwolves even raised tanking for Fantix. They at least save one member of their team. And it's going to be enough to handily take out this game, you would imagine. Dependent on Pac-Man. Well, Exhaust was there. Uses the... Chrono Break gets himself back to relative safety. No. Seb's going to turn up. The Nexus is well and truly bare, but the two tanky members of Abyss are going to be enough to deter the Dire Just barely, it looks like Abyss hold the fort. Dragon available. It's going to be the third. The bottom lane already pushed, and they have everything they need, Dire to look to close out the rest of this game. Really strong team play, honestly. It feels like the communication's there. Raised when he is ahead. Just on another playing field as well. Oh, yeah. We'll be able to go back and finish off Blade of the Room King very quickly. Now just zoning out two people from this Dragon Pit. As Sybil's actually relatively low. Regret Seb wants to steal this. Yeah, he's looking for something here, but it is going to be taken. Ray's over the wall there as well. And Seb just permanently slowed down. He's going to get stunned. Shippies comes in. And there's just too much lockdown. Seb's dead. Rampage in for Ray's. As he's now 4-0 and 10. 100% kill participation. This guy's a beast. And he's found Pac-Man one more time. This is a Direwolves squad looking 400 times better than week number one. Welcome to the team, Regret. Because it's just transformed them. Yeah, honestly, Direwolves have just sent a biz to the slaughterhouse. This has been amazingly well played from them. This should just be the game, you would assume. Yeah, Fantix, Fantix actually going for crack. the 1v1. Does, I believe, still have the Zonyas? No, it's actually on cooldown as Raze is going to turn up, picks up. Oh, the flash! Raze finally blocks an ultimate for his teammates as Trishop Barrage is going to fly forward. T-Gun tanks that one up. Glacial Fissure was there, but the Nexus should probably be the focus here from the Direwolves as T-Gun, Squidgy, everyone's getting low. Direwolves just want kills on this map if they can find them. Landra Spike comes in and they're going to utilize that in order to take down the Nexus. Direwolves. What a game! And still, race. 100% good participation. 6-0-10 for the Ezreal. Whew, looking good. Yeah, Raze was looking fantastic. The TF yep. as well is something that we said needs to be addressed. He's very good at actually moving around the map, Fantix, and doesn't matter how his lane goes, he still puts in a bit of work. Those ocean drakes, man. Yeah, just ridiculous. Total dominance from the Dials there. We're going to throw it back to the desk to see what they made of that game. Thank you so much, Atlas. And you know we had a similar thought here, a comprehensive victory. I think we called it for the Direwolves going into that. But I do want to have a look at their new support player a little bit closer uh, in regards to what Regret has brought to this team because their lane swap looked pretty impressive this time around. Yeah, I definitely think Regret brings a lot of knowledge in that area. Um, from the short time we got to speak to him during our boot camp last split, um, he seemed to know what he was talking about in the lane swap. So I think that's something he can bring to Direwolves who are overall lacking in that area. And of course, Abyss, on the other hand, uh, Chippy's falling down nice and early for Oscar Aaron and wasn't able to find his way back into the game. Uh, sorry, not Chippy's. Pac-Man falling down yeah. early. Chippy's was a better Maokai Pac-Man. got the yeah. crazy CS lead. That's what we're talking about. Direwolves looking so much cleaner around the map in their macro decisions. Uh, Chippy's had an incredible CS lead, got the advantage, and then that also then translated into early dragon pressure. So great job on the early part of this map that set them up and unlocked them for success down the road. And you know, we hit the mid lane matchup as the area that we wanted to focus. You know, you have Luch going up against Fantix. Fantix picks up the cover to Twisted Fate. Puts a little bit of a clinic on there in that game. His Twisted Fate looked pretty impressive. Yeah, I think that was definitely the experience showing through there. He really knows his way around the Twisted Fate and getting around the map, and Luch didn't really have an answer. And what did you think about the Rise build, for Oscar? And I know you're all about the new items that came into the patch. You gave us a rundown of cooldown reduction being everywhere. I don't even know the item's name, so beg my pardon, but, you know, I'm just going to throw it over. Rise's build, what did you make of it? Um, I wasn't quite a big fan on it. The uh, the gun, I, what is it called? I don't even know the name of it. Uh, 
It's been used so rarely, I have no idea what the name is. It shoots rockets. It it's shoots <laughs> IC rockets. <laughs> it shoots at the CC, and we saw him actually shoot out the rockets when he got ganked in the mid lane. He hit it with Fantix. Um, but the slow on it is, what, 0.5 seconds? Mm -hmm. So Nothing. it's just yeah. abysmal of a slow. You get immediate power versus the scaling power of the Roa, but the Roa just works so much better in Ryze's kit that I just... I don't, let's put that one on the back burner. That's not, that's not a great item. So yep. Luch, unfortunately, <laughs> not able to pick up a good item there in the shop. And, you know, this is something that's important because now we get to see a young team in Abyss, something that they haven't really had their backs up against a wall like this. I mean, they were pretty dominant in the OCS along with Chiefs Black. They just got it taken to them from Direwolves in a very macro-heavy game. Is this the point where you just go back to the drawing board and, like, we're just going to fight you? We're going to play Abyss-style League of Legends? Uh, I, w I wanted to quickly touch back on the item because I felt uh, like it okay, wasn't as on. fair to him. I felt bad after uh, after doing it. Um, it's fine to look for the immediate power spike right there. Like if you're trying to wait that, well, you know, this one's going to make me stronger right now versus the road taking time to ramp up. But the issue is, is then when you also look in tandem with their AD carry, Caitlyn, who had the double AD items, um, and I think sitting around on tier one boots, it was very obvious that they had slotted her into a side lane to farm to try to get it past that 25 power spike minute mark. Um, so like taking the immediate item versus the scaling item when you were still waiting on your AD carry to ramp up. I just think it, it didn't, like, as the as the side note to that, they obviously weren't on the same page with it. All right, so there's a serious answer. Going back go. to what Abyss need to do. Like, is this a team, like, you've played against the Direwolves quite a lot on Sin. Can you out team fight them? And this is a team that you can kind of drag around the map and bring down to a level? Or it, do you think that they are more exploitable on that macro level that they used to suffer on? Um, I think taking away the TF is pretty important. I think that their macro level improves so much when they have TF. Without it, they look a lot more lost. Um, their team fighting is definitely something you can play against, although I would say it is probably their strong suit, so I wouldn't recommend Abyss go against that. I think they probably need to rely on Seb to take over the early game here. I think it's more of their um, their scrappiness. Like, when we talk about the dire wolves, you know, when the wolves go hunting, uh, it's about their 3v3s and their skirmishes, uh, particularly because they have such incredibly talented mechanical players like Fantix in that mid lane that it's a f if it's pretty much Fantix plus any other iteration of the direwolves like plus two members they're sure to win that as long as it's an even fight when you start getting to the more 5v5s that's when actually the direwolves start to fall apart a little bit when you compare them to the other top end OPL teams like Chiefs like Legacy uh, and we actually saw that in this game when they would have gold leads and they would just simply lose team fights. And something like that is actually unacceptable. And I think that's the next step that the Direwolves need to take in shoring up their full 5v5 to make sure that they are actually an elite team in the OPL. Well, talking about shoring up a 15,000 gold victory, we'll certainly do that for you. However, guys, they do have to still win the best of three. So don't go anywhere after the break. We'll be back for game number two between Abyss Esports and the Direwolves. <laughs> 